Hey, it's Mike with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Monday. It's March 2nd. This will be our chart lesson for today. And we started a new month today. February went by quick. Of course, it's a short month. Uh, it was leap year, so we had an extra day in there, but still, it's a pretty short month. So uh, it seems like January and February both just flew by. Believe it or not, we'll be uh, switching to another contract here in a couple of weeks. And so the year is moving on, but uh, the volatility continues. We continue to have a really volatile market. I mean, the, the movement today was, I mean, we were down here below 3,000, and we at one time we were almost at 3,100. So, um, I mean, we, it's almost a 200-point move today. So that's a huge, that is a huge, huge day. And so there's trends in the end. It, well, actually, let me back up here. Early on, it looked like it was going to be a range day. You can see the overnight highs and overnight lows. The pro only problem with that is, I mean, from 2,900 to, say, 3,000, that's a 100-point range. And so a 100-point range is huge. So really... Even if it had a played out like a range, it's no big deal. You still got enough room in here where you got trends, you know, large trends. And, I mean, this chart looks so messy here. But hopefully when we narrow down, you can see the, you know, a, a little closer or a much lower level. It doesn't look quite as confusing, I guess is the word I'm trying to find there. But uh, anyway... In the big scheme of things, we really just had a two-tiered channel that worked up all day. We had a break here, a move to a new high, and it sold off a little bit since then. So, um, but it could have been a range day. But again, it doesn't really matter because it's so big that you can get trends in both directions. So you just pl you just got to narrow on down in and find the one that works and play it. And you can see this main two-tiered channel working up. We got the break, the new high. And then you can see this one working down. On this particular one, we had an overshoot, and the big and the other trend line working up kind of came into play and took over, and it just kept going high. Here, we did the same thing. We're correcting. We get an overshoot, and then it takes off again. And it was kind of a repeat pattern of this one. So anyway, really what you have to do to trade this is just kind of narrow in way on down. And you can see all the lines in here as we start to back out. And there's just, you know, it's just the way you got to trade this thing till things kind of um, get back to a more normal market, so to speak. But you can see the trends I was playing, these little tight ranges and these shorter term trend lines and so forth. That's what, that's basically how I've been playing it. And that's really the only way you can play it and stay on the right side. Because, I mean, even this, what looked like a little tiny correction right here on when you back out, just this one leg here is 29, just short, just short of 20. Actually, if you count from here, 29.80 all the way down to uh, 29.40, basically. That's 40 points. 40 point move on a regular day might be you know all you see so you can see all this price action in here and how I've narrowed down and tried to get into the smaller trends and smaller channels and so forth and um, it's quite a few trades here again like every day we've had lately you could argue for a few of these others uh, if you're if a signal bar looks slightly different, it might have been a good trade. Uh, so, you, you know, you may you're you may see some trades that I didn't mark that that you could argue for and so forth. So don't get too caught up in all that. Just uh, you know, just look at the big picture and and if you got a question on one, by all means, send it to me. But for the most part, you're gonna you know I can't mark them all, but you know I'm just marking the ones that are really clear on my chart. And the ones that are pretty obvious. So, uh, I mean, you can be picky. You can be more picky on days like this because you're going to get lots and lots of setups. So just keep that in mind. But 7 o'clock came right in here. We actually had a ton of price action before, from 7 to 8.30 till the regular market. Of course, this blue line is where 8.30 hits and where the regular market comes. 
and I just like to do my chart that way so I know when I'm trading in the overnight and when I'm switching over and so forth and so just keep that in mind if you're new and you're un unsure why I have the different colors in there and then at two o'clock is when I normally is my cutoff time and it'll go back to blue at two o'clock right there until the close and it'll open back up at 3.30 and uh, it'll be blue again until 8.30 tomorrow morning. So that's really the way my chart kind of plays out. So, But let's try to back out a little more here where it's a little bit more, it's a little bit easier to see things. And there's a lot of trades here, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on each trade. I'm going to move through them pretty quickly. So... Anyway, early on we were working up in this. It looks like it looked like we were just kind of would jump up and would kind of go sideways and jump up and kind of go sideways. Um, I like this one basically because it was a second entry long. It's a fairly bullish bar. It's not perfect though, so I did mark this one green. Being that early, you know, you're not quite back to the EMA. But notice that jump up and you get a first entry and you pull back and you get a second entry. And there's really like a little triple test of the lows of that big bullish bar right there. You tested it once, tested it. Actually, you tested it a couple of times right there and then came back. So it's like a little double test. It's a second entry long, uh, relatively bullish bar. Um, if you had a perfect signal bar, I wouldn't have a problem making that one blue. Maybe still, uh, the reason I didn't, the other thing I didn't like, because it's still a little bit away. If I pull that away, you can see you're not quite back to the EMA. But when you get a strong market, a lot of times it'll do that. So uh, early on, you know, the longer you stay away from that EMA, like right here, the more dangerous it gets. And you just got to kind of wait till it gets back because you're going to get burned more times than not on these things. So um, we'll talk about those as we get there. But anyway, we, we finally break out of this and we drop down here uh, and being that far away from the EMA after we've been above it that long you're going to snap back pretty quickly and you're probably going to come all the way back to test this breakout area and notice when we went through we didn't even test it uh, but you don't want to take this actually this is your signal bar that made the low so in this case I'd wait for a higher low and then I'd still want to have room to get out before I got back to the EMA and you get that right here and you can kind of set that short term trend line off that so that's a nice little setup there. And then we come back again here. And but not a very good signal bar. And that does confirm really you confirm that trend line right here because there was the second swing. Drew it off those first two swings and then you come back. So this if you count this one trade though, um, depending on how you set it up, you if you just if you're using your moving your stop to break even or whatever, you're not gonna get a runner there. But Early on, if you can catch one of these early, you might be the only trade you have to take for the day. Um, and you may have even looked at this like a second entry. And if you did, you could call this a failed second entry short. But I'd want a little better setup than that. My signal bar is terrible on my chart. So um, I would wait. There is a higher low right there. I'm not crazy about it because it's right into those highs. You see, we just turned down off of that. I didn't draw my line all the way across, but we will, so you can see it. So you got to be a little bit leery going long right into that. It's too dangerous. Uh, you do get a failed second entry um, short right here, and you may have had this midline. Early on, this looked like the channel to me right here, and I, I was thinking this may be a, an overshoot. But when we came back again here and it bounces right off of it, then you got to be thinking, well, hey, maybe this is a midline. So that's another one that you might take. You've just been away from the EMA a little longer than I like. But if you see this midline here, then you kind of understand why maybe it didn't come back further and you may take that trade. I still think you're better off to wait. It does run up. You start, you get a close outside and you just start, you actually get a close outside and a new high and a couple legs, but it just keeps bouncing off this support. And look how many times it bounced off. Uh, you actually get a double test right here. You made it, you test it once, you test it twice, uh, but you got to go long right into those highs and there's not enough room to get out there. Uh, and you see what happens. It comes back again. And now you get a little room to get out before you can get, 
before you get back to those highs and it bounces and plus it bounces off the EMA again and resets right there. So I like that one. That one takes on off. Um, there's a failure right there, but you're too far away from the EMA and this thing's played out now. So uh, you're better off to wait. And then you kind of start going sideways. Notice how you had this set up. Well, this is kind of like a little repeat. You run up and it starts working sideways again. And you're testing these lows and you you test it once, twice, and then you kind of get a little double test. This is not as nice a setup because you've moved a long way. And if you've got this two-tiered channel right, we've we've moved to equal distance uh, and we're turning down. So we're probably, you know, you just came off the highs. And so this is a little bit, uh, a little bit more aggressive here uh, because you're looking for prices to come down. And, but there's some reasons to like it. I just told you it's, it's a double test. It's off the EMA. Um, you've got strong support right there, and you get a little trap by letting it drop lower. And that's a really bullish bar. Uh, it, at first glance, it looks like that's going to be a trap to the long side, but it holds and goes back up. And now you get a chance. There's actually a uh, little failure right here. Notice you made that high. You try to go higher once. You try to go higher twice. But you don't want to go short right into that. And uh, actually, it breaks lower right there. But you don't want to go short right into that. And you could say, okay, we'll wait on this signal bar. But you got the same problem. You're right at the EMA. It drops on through, though. And... Um, but now we're too far away from the EMA. I just don't like going short right in there. You've actually got that little short-term trend line working down right through there. And you've got a break. And we're just kind of working along. And finally, you make a double bottom and then a higher low right here. And, uh, and so technically, that's a higher low working off that same trend line. You actually bounce off the trend line right here, but not a very good signal bar. But right here, I like this one. It actually breaks lower and turns and goes out the upper side. Just go long right there. It makes a higher low right here, but it's into all that resistance. So you can't really go long there. And uh, notice how it doesn't make it back up there this time. That's a good sign that we're probably going lower. You do get a little um, failed second entry long right in here. But again, not a very good setup. And then finally, you get a new high here, first entry, second entry. You get a failed second entry long. I like going short right there. Um, this one's real close to being green. And the reason being is that you've got this midline on the bigger channel. And we bounced off of it a couple of times here. But we should have taken on off right here. In fact, you might have even considered going long right there. Um, just because there's a new high, first entry, second entry. And there is some support right there. So, I mean, you could even argue for that one. I didn't mark it because at this point, I wasn't sure what, I, I, at this point, you would think we would probably try to get another leg like that right here. And that was the real concern. The fact that we didn't get back up to those highs. So you're looking for at least a measured move, which is way down here. And you see, we did get a perfect measured move and you got a little two-legged correction then it took off again. So at that part you might point you might get another measured move. So you're looking at that because that's generally going to be the center of the pattern right there. And there is a second entry short, but not a very good signal uh, setup or signal bar. And uh, it just drops on down. And of course, it bounces uh, again right off that key. This is the main trend line. It's kind of hard to see here. Let me back out. You would have drawn it off that first swing there. And so, two, you probably wouldn't have had this midline yet uh, running up through here. So that's another reason to think you probably would have gone lower there uh, because you probably wouldn't have seen it bouncing off that midline. But I like going long here just simply because you'd had your break. Actually, you got an overshoot first, then you break, and your new low. And the key, real key for going long here is you might have drawn your trend line already off these two, and then you're bouncing off of it. 
And but what I really like here is that we're so far away from the EMA and you made a good run up and came back and then made a higher low and you're still a long way off. So you got a lot of room to play, even if it's going to run up there and turn down again. And if you catch one of these lows like this, you can see the move you get. And while it doesn't look like it, that's a 29.43 to basically almost 60, 69, close to 70. That's a that's a huge move right there. And you catch that one move, one runner, you're you're pretty much done for the day. So anyway, it runs up. You get a you got a little trend line working up. You get a close outside. It keeps working higher. That's a tempting one right there to go short, but you're you're taking a chance right there of guessing on the top. So you're better off to wait on the lower high, which comes here. Now it's right into the EMA. So just see if you get a reversal, and you do right there. And look at that nice bearish bar. That's an easy setup, and then it gives you one more little jog back. And if you weren't already in here, I'd definitely jump in in here because you probably trapped some longs on that one. And you can see it runs on down, and then it bounces again. Now you definitely confirmed your trend line here, but that is so bearish uh, that I'd want to wait on a higher low. And you get one right here, but you've already been back to the EMA basically. And that's not a very good signal bar, so you may wait, but it is right at the key entry point. So you may wait on your um, reversal type pattern, which comes here. And this actually broke lower and turned higher. And I, you know, your hope is it's it's going to run all the way back up again. Plus, you had an overshoot here. This two-tier chance. So much going on here, it's hard to remember to talk about all of it. But at this point, you're really playing this two-tier channel working down until it, until right here. Anything you get off this, it's a good setup. You probably want to take this. But, uh, but anyway, I thought it would take off there. It does, and it comes back. But guess what? It bounces right here again. But you don't get a chance to enter until this higher low right here and notice that pushes through the EMA pulls back test it also the midline on this two-tiered channel working down working from this high down to here and you can see this this trend line is overtaking it so we're at least going back up to here so if you can find the long in there you want to take it and look at it go and again if you catch this one this is a runner here look at it go and that's a you know, 2960 kind of move all the way to 90, that's 35, 40 points. I marked another one in here. I marked it green. There's a second entry right there. And you can tell this is a pretty strong trend. Now you're starting to see those little uh, stems on both sides and it just keeps working higher and higher. And the, the corrections are not very big. Even though I say that these are pretty big corrections, but as far as the bigger move, those are pretty small corrections. And especially right here when you can't even really make lower lows, you just kind of tick lower a tick or two. So you may take that trade. It is a second entry. Notice that high right there and you pull back and you get a first entry and then you correct again. So there's a second entry long there. Anything past that, you just got to let it go. It's too far. And notice this little reversal pattern with a, still a long way to go back to the EMA. It doesn't look very far in there, but that's probably... I don't know how many points that is. It's probably, we'll just look at that one bar and see how many points that bar is. Well, where are you? There it is. The range on that is, that's 11 tick bar, just that one bar. So that's, that's probably four points back to the EMA there. And so even though, so that's a good bit of, so, Notice that new high and you get a first entry and a second entry and it fails. Just You're just hoping to ride that back there and you may get more out of it, which you do. Runs on down and then you get a second entry short right here. Notice that new low, first entry, second entry. And by that time, you realize you're running sideways. And we get this little failed break lower here. This actually broke lower and turned and went out the other side. I like going long just to ride it back to the EMA in case it's going lower. Because we did trade down in here. So you, you may get another measured leg 
right here. It doesn't work out that way. There's your first leg. So you'd look for a measured leg when it went lower. Uh, we don't get that. Uh, but you still want to play this as a failed break because you, you're probably going to run back to the EMA at the very least. And you may run back to here even if it's going to turn down. But this thing just takes off again. And look, another runner. This, these little failed breakouts always turn out, you know, often, shouldn't say always, but often turn out to be uh, major, ho major lows or major highs. I didn't want to come out there properly. So, but um, that turns out to be an important low for the day. I shouldn't say major. I should say important uh, because sometimes it will be the lower high of the high of the day or the lower of the day. This isn't obviously going to be the low of the day, but it's probably the lowest we've been. We probably only never come that low again the rest of the day. So from that point on, that's a low for the day. And look at that move. Just a quick jump up is again. That's twenty nine eighty to. Over 3,000, another 20 point move with the runner. And you're just too far away from the EMA up here. Even though you got a failed second entry short right here, you just, just leave that alone. You can see it's a little spike in channel. There is a second entry right here. Notice that's a double top. So, uh, and that's really kind of a hidden one anyway, but it's first entry, second, or you could just count it right there first entry, second entry. But not a very good setup. So, but here you get a little reversal. Notice that move up. First entry short, second entry short. It bounces right off the EMA. I like going long there. Um, you don't get anything but a scout. But I mean, that's a couple of points or so. It's several points there actually. But uh, that move might be five or six, eight points. Then you make another second entry here. I didn't mark this one. Notice that I first entry, second entry, because it's not a very good signal bar. But it runs on up, comes back first entry, pulls back second entry, and it's right off that midline there. This actually broke lower and turned and went out the other side. I like going long right there. And you actually come back here and get a couple more tests, but look at the resistance you start to build right there. And you just can't go long into that. It ends up pushing on through, but you don't know that it's going to do that. So we run up here and we turn down off this. You kind of have a junction here between this smaller two tier channel we've been playing all the way up and the big one I showed you from way out at the very beginning. And there's actually a reversal right here. Notice you're coming down first entry, and then you get a perfect measured move down in the second entry, and it fails right there. It actually ticks higher right there and fails, but when it tries to go again, um, right off that key entry point, on the bigger picture, you can see the two legs down, and that's a huge, nice bearish bar. Just go short right there. And you, again, that doesn't look like much, but that's five to... 10 points right there. And we bounce off this midline. You get a higher low here, but it's back into the EMA. It's right at that trend line on this two tiered. It's kind of getting hard to see this for y'all probably, but um, run zone up, comes back again to this trend line, and then you go short once, twice, and when it breaks higher right here, I like going long. Nice bullish bar too. There's another one right here. It's a failure. I didn't mark this one because there's just a lot of resistance right there. Um, you may have taken it. It still was enough room in there to scalp out, but I didn't. You know, I'm not. I I wouldn't take one that not into all those highs right there when we just came off high there and we're just kind of and this one we already had a break here and you just there's too much resistance right across there my line's not drawn all the way across but hopefully you can see that now you just don't want to go long into that and that's why hopefully you can see that now 
you're, you're taking a big chance going long right into that. So it drops on down, first entry, and then a second entry, and then a double test right there. So uh, I wouldn't take that failed second entry necessarily, but if you count from this side, it's a first entry. And there's actually a second entry short, but again, I don't like that signal bar, but when it tries to go higher again there, there's really like a double test there. Let me draw another line here. And that's why I mark that one. Notice that you make that high, you test it once, you come back, you test it again, and it fails and turns and goes out the other side. That's a trap, and you're probably... And we did come off the high, so we're probably headed to here. And boom, off it goes. And I would actually measure this whole leg because that's one leg really in a bigger picture and from there you're looking for a measured move and you can see you still got a long way to go there we actually get much more than a measured move um, and you get this little tight channel working down we bounce here and then we come back and we make a lower high right here and you're still looking for prices to come down here. So plus now you got another two tiered channel working this way. And it's pretty much confirmed off this low. And I actually drew this off these lows and drug it up to here. So that's how I got this up here. But we turned, we got a lower high right there. Look how we shot right through the EMA. That's a good sign. It's a nice bearish signal. You didn't get any support off that, so it means it's still bearish. And then this breaks higher, turns down, closes almost on its low. Just look for another leg, if nothing else, and that's what you get before it bounces. And it comes back here. You get a first entry, then you get a second entry. You actually get a little second entry, and it's not really a failure until it breaks higher above the next bar, which is right here. So, and there's actually a little hidden second entry long there too. Runs up. This one's tempting, but a little bit of congestion right there. And this didn't break higher. Same thing here. It's just a little congestive. I don't see a good setup there. You don't really get a good setup off this trend line until way down here. Um, when you finally got a nice bearish bar and you still got a little bit of room to here. Uh, this one's an inside bar. There's actually a decent bar right here, but it, you got all that support across there, and that's the reason I don't like that one. Hopefully you can see that. So that's a little dangerous going short into that. But finally, this is actually a new high, and then a first entry, and then a second entry. So it's a failed second entry long. It actually went higher first and runs down. It doesn't break lower. It just makes it dump. Uh, two bar match in low, but if it breaks lower than that, it's probably going to drop to at least here. But this thing takes on off, and it doesn't check up on either one of those, this trend line or this trend channel line right here. And it just shoots on down. And then notice the reversal pattern. You get a first entry, and it shoots right through the EMA, pulls back, you get a second entry, nice bullish bar, it fails right at the EMA, go long right there. It actually comes back and makes a double bottom. Uh, not a very good signal bar to be right at 2 o'clock. If you had a really good signal bar right there, I'd be okay with that one. You still might even mark it green because it's a higher double bottom than way down here. So, And you did just have a big overshoot here. So, But with all the trades we have, you're, you know, it's getting a little dangerous taking some iffies ones, but we're still a little ways from the EMA too. So you'd expect it to try to come back and test it again, if it, even if it was going lower. We'll give you another look from the big picture. That got us into the 2 o'clock hour, so. But the big picture, we just had this two-tiered channel working higher. And you had a break. Man, this was a huge move here late in the afternoon. 29.90 range all the way to 30 .90. So that's a 100-point move after 2 o'clock today. You won't see that very often. Um, it happens occasionally. You get a nice afternoon move. Not a 100-point move, really. But this is not a normal market. So um, these things are, I mean, last few days, uh, 
just to go through the trades kind of quickly like that and not even talk about every single possibility is taking 30 minutes or so. So this is a not this is a very unusual market. It may continue for a while. Uh, we were overdue for a nice rally. 200 points is pretty good. So that's the thing. Whenever you get these big sell-offs, the best thing to do is not panic and just tell yourself we're going to get a bounce here pretty quick. And if you're, you know, if you like to be play the odds, you know, go get you, you know, don't try to do a day trading. Go try to buy, go buy you a, <clears throat> when the market starts getting way out of hand like that, go buy you a, uh, a cheap short term, uh, with not much time left, um, um, option instead of, um, you know, go to your options where you can buy something cheap and you, you can, you know, you know what your, what your losses are going to be. And, and you can, you know, you can make a lot of money. Uh, the key is don't buy them too far out of the money, you know, just buy them with not a lot of time, you know, less than 30 days. It's the way I like to do it. Just find you an option with less than 30 days on it. So you're not paying for a lot of time and, um, and you don't want to be too far out of the money. So if we're trading down here today, you might only be one or two, um, strikes out of the money. And so it doesn't take you very much to get in the money. And then once it gets in the money, it's moving almost like a real, uh, I mean, you're moving dollar for dollar, just like a regular, if you bought a, co a regular contract. And so that's where you can really make some money when these things happen. I've talked about this before and, I, and I'm, you know, I don't teach options and I, I don't want to, you know, so, uh, you know, go read about options and stuff like that if you want to do that. But that's the safe way to try to capitalize off these markets that are overdone like that to the downside. And you'll get two or three chances a year maybe to do something like that on some occasions. It doesn't work as well to the upside because this market can get a, can go forever to the upside. But when it's to the downside, it seems to work a lot better. Um, <clears throat> what happens is that the market just gets, people get spooked and it gets oversold. And then when it starts rallying, it rallies like crazy, like it did today, almost 200 points. So, uh, I mean, that's, I mean, if you cat, if you get a lucky and capitalize off that, and it's not really luck because you can see this happen over and over when you get really sold off like that, when it about, when it, when it turns, it rallies. So, I mean, you know, it's not hard to pick an option that, you know, when the, when you get a 200 point day, I mean, you can buy a cheap, cheap option this morning that sits way into the money this afternoon. So just keep that in mind. But, um, I didn't really intend to get off on that, but um, I'd rather see people try to capitalize on these big moves using options rather than trying to hang on here uh, to a regular contract and having to ride out these huge moves and, you know, and taking a chance when then suddenly it doesn't come back again and your rally's over. But you can do it with an option and, you know, limit your losses even if you're 100% wrong. So just something to think about. I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow. Hope you had a good day. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.